So, um, as, as mentioned, we're here to discuss uh, one of our Coastwalk Public Art projects, which will um, manifest itself at McKillop Park in Freshwater. And tonight's event is to introduce you all to uh, Nicole Monks, the creative director and founder of Millie Millie, a First Nations art team. Just to run through quickly what the Coastwalk Public Art Program is, I'm sure some of you already know, but the North, Northern Beaches Coastwalk stretches from Manly to Palm Beach, and it connects and celebrates some of Sydney's most iconic beaches and surf breaks, ocean rock pools, aquatic reserves, surf life saving clubs, headlands, lagoons, archaeological sites, and places of significant local heritage. Uh, this spectac spectacular coastline, coastline is a unique and memorable walking experience for visitors and for locals. Northern Beaches Council is developing creative opportunities to explore our beach culture, local history, the spectacular natural environment and Aboriginal heritage and continuing culture along the coast walk through its public art program. This long term project has evolved from Northern Beaches Council's Coast Walk Public Art Strategic Plan and Scoping Study, which are both available on our website and are very fascinating reads. We currently have other public art projects underway uh, at Mona Vale Surf Life Saving Club, Long Reef Surf Life Saving Club, Robert Dunn Reserve, Freshwater Beach Park, Newport, Coleroy, Narrabeen Lagoon, Avalon and Long Reef Headland. Um, we have this map to show you visually um, some of the locations of our public art projects. Uh, this uh, map shows the scale of the infrastructure project um, of the Coast Walk and some of the sections that have been upgraded or are being upgraded uh, in the boxes on the right and on the in the green boxes on the left you'll see uh, some of our current and future Coast Walk public art projects. And uh, all of these um, maps and information will be also available tomorrow night at the Harbour Diggers where we hope to meet some of you in person and to you can ask further questions in person then if you're able to attend. And with that, I'll hand over to you, Nicole. Wonderful. Uh, thanks, Christiane. Um, firstly, I'd just like to say thanks to everyone who's come to the online meetings. I know they you know, aren't as great as meeting online, but uh, or meeting in person, but it's really great to have you. It's, uh, um, it's a real honour for me to actually be here. I um, I got to call the Northern Beaches home during my 20s and was lucky, you know, I lived at Narrabeen and Colorado Plateau and Manly for over five years. So I've jogged along the foreshores, I've walked in the bushland there and I've learned from the rock art sites and most recently surfed at Curl Curl. So today I'm here to listen, learn and exchange lived experiences and um, we'll have plenty of time at the end to have a good yarn. But uh, firstly, I'd just like to share you know, my story of how we've come here to be today. I'll start with a little about me, a little about Millie Millie, a little about the public art process and a lot about the artwork and um, then we'll open up for some questions. So a little about me. Um, my name's Nicole Monks. I'm Deputy Audrey, Dutch and English, and I'm a multidisciplinary creative. I was born in Subiaco in Western Australia uh, in 1981, and I've grown up on the East Coast uh, from a baby, actually, in a tiny little town, quite similar uh, in many ways to Freshwater. It has a very good um, surf and beach culture there. It's called Pacific Palm. Some of you may know it's near Foster, Tunkari. Um, but since then, I have spent half of my life in Sydney, most recently in Redburn. But now I've just relocated to Newcastle. So that's sort of you know, halfway between both to um, raise my son, Yara, who started school this year. So... <laughs> After finishing school in um, Foster, I have um, gone to be educated at, in both art and design at various um, institutions and universities around Australia. And I've since worked as an interior designer for 15 years and 10 years as an artist and have my own company called Black and White Creative for design and a public art company called Millie Millie. Next slide, thanks. <laughs> Um, this is actually an image of my great great grandmother, Granny Laurie, and um, she had her only child stolen at the age of three, and all of her associated paperwork destroyed by the government. Uh, the repercussions of this was that I grew up believing I was only Dutch and English, and it wasn't until 2008 and the sorry day when the government apologised and opened up the files on the stolen generations 
and was obliged to reconnect people with their families that I was able to find my mob, which in itself is quite the miracle as the only reason I was able to connect the dots was because an employee of the Department of Aboriginal Affairs had kept the files that he was sent to destroy by the government in his garage, in a box, in the 80s, and he still worked for the government in that department. This, displace, this displacement is a very common story, and I'm one of the lucky ones who was able to reconnect. Um, next slide, please, thank you. Um, so since this time, I've worked to reignite and reconnect culture through elemental practice, ephemeral art, collaborative practice, community participation, and Aboriginal-led practice on country. I'm particularly interested in cre creating visible, uh, visible stories of Aboriginal culture within the public domain, which has led me to launch the first, nation, na first Nations public art company, Milly Milly. Um, so a little bit about Milly Milly. Millie Millie is a team of continuing custodian creatives. Uh, each project that Millie Millie undertakes brings together a unique team that includes continuing custodians, leading and emerging artists, curators, creative directors, landscape designers, graphic designers, and community engagement management ma managers. Sorry. Um, for this project, um, we were very lucky from the beginning to work with local Adam Byrne from Bush to Bowl and include, including his team. Uh, we believe working with the local continuing custodians is key to meaningful placemaking and artworks. And I must say, uh, the Aboriginal community in the Northern Beaches is a talented and wonderful group of people. And I would just like to acknowledge their tireless work for years on this coastal walk mm. project so that stories of this place can be shared with the broader community. Um, it is an immense job, custodianship, as we engage with local knowledge holders during the entirety of a project and ensure cultural project protocols and practices are maintained. Um, we are also dedicated to capacity building and men continuing custodians, artists and arts workers during the process. So um, our team at Millie Millie has over 30 years experience in design and supply of custom fabrication and public art. We work from concept to completion, from design development, fabrication, delivery, installation, and developing maintenance programs for the artworks so they can continue to look beautiful for your community into the future. Um, now, a little bit about the process. Um, Mikula Park Headland is a very special, very special place you know, to the local mob, um, but we also understand that it's a very special place for the broader community as well, to go and watch the whales breaching, to visit the baths, to watch the sunset and sunrise. It is a part of the Manly Freshwater World Surfing Reserve and is set to be at the beginning of the coastal walk and the location of public artwork. There is a layered story here and a place of great significance for many. And so the process for the public art started as an international expression of interest. Christian, do you know exactly how many people first um, responded to that EOI? I think about 38, if memory serves. Yeah, I thought it was about that. 38 people then responded, and then three were selected to give a conceptual response to the site. Millie Millie was the only Aboriginal public art com company in that competition. And the Northern Beaches then had a group of experts in their field to deliberate over the presented works on Millie Millie. Um, from the commission, so that's where you should. <laughs> ah, uh, this was great news because um, we understood, you know, because of the coastal walk feedback that the community was really interested in finding out more about Aboriginal stories connected to the northern beaches. So we were really excited to bring this work to the public domain for everybody to enjoy. Um, so McKillop Park Headlands and Surrounds is a very special place. For Millie Millie, the starting point for this, for this work was deeply embedded in country to pay respect to this remarkable site that had been inhabited for thousands of years and provided an opportunity for others to take time to connect to this site and the significant headlands beyond and, and to each other. In understanding this place, there were many stories like the wattle and the whale song lines, the rock art and the sacred places, the sky stories, the people here being fit and healthy, the fishing, and in particular the saltwater animals, and also the living memories. 
we learn a lot about this country, but with the location high on the end of the headland, one story became the most poignant, and that was a fire. Signal fires have been lit on headlands up and down the east coast by Aboriginal people for tens of thousands of years as part of a sophisticated system of communication. These messages were for many purposes, including the announcement of approaching tribes, hunting signals to honour people and to act as warnings. These methods of communication in primary knowledge were primary knowledge to mob up and down the coast. Possum skins were used to smother and control the smoke signals issued out and coded communications were told between distant tribes. The smoke from such fires was the first indication recorded in many of the European journals and artworks of inhabitation. When Lieutenant Cook sailed the Endeavour in the East Coast in 1770, Aboriginal people lit carefully managed signal fires on headlands as a warning. And this was written in his diary on the 21st of April, 1770. Yeah. We saw the smoke of fire in many places, a certain sign that the country is inhabited. And while the, sh the ship's crew noticed smoke and fires, they lacked the cultural knowledge to see that an emergency response system was in action. Aileen Blackburn, a Monroy Ewan elder, response was smoke was more than proof that the land was inhabited. We used Duralan, fire, and Dumbuk, smoke, to warn of bad omen that was repeated from point to point along the coast. It was our responsibility to send the message on, light fires, and make sure that everyone was well informed. From what we can reconstruct, signal networks in Australia consisted of vantage points such as hills, headlands, beaches facing bodies of waters, water, and even sand dunes. Mm. The particular location, McKillop Park, out on the point water headland, where you can see all the way from North Head to Long Reef. Um, this place may have been very useful for a place of signal fires to communicate over long distances. Um, fire was also used by Aboriginal people for numerous things, cultural burning, seasonal burning, ceremony, keeping mosquitoes and pests away, and also meeting places where people often come together to cook and for warmth. These ideas of gathering spaces align with the more current use as a gathering space for whale watching, as a destination for sunset and sunrise. And we also wanted to create a place where people could engage and make this a more enjoyable experience of place looking outwards towards the ocean. I just put on a little video for everybody that we've put on the website. You may have seen it, but we'll just press play on that one. This is such a special, special site here. It's just a wonderful space to have a real connection to the local culture. We wanted to create a space that was really for the community and had a really strong Aboriginal voice and connection to this place. We really want to bring all of the histories together. It's quite well documented that mob had fires all along the headland here, talking to each other and creating a community along the whole coastline. And we can continue those connections for mob and for the water. Did everybody hear that? I hope that was audible. This is and, special. and so this is how we developed the artwork currently known as Varuna, meaning smolder. This name is currently being consulted with the community and we will confirm this at a later date. But Waruna, as it's currently called, is a luminous marker, a, manifest, a physical manifestation of the interconnection of all people and all communities. The artwork has to be experienced and, and it's to be an experience and it's to add to your community in more than just a visual way. You know, this artwork is a destination to dream to read a book, to weave, a place to be with friends, to come on NADOC Day, pay respects to those who have passed, and also to reflect and to create new memories. Um, 
the generous seating within Maruna orientates people in the northeast direction. This was consistent with what the Aboriginal mob of the local area really wanted to see. So we've engaged with that um, local knowledge and we've we've um, dedicated it to face the northeast. So the prevailing winds on this site um, also exposed from from that back is where shelters would have been orientated since steep time. So a dynamic windswept form that is functional and beautiful with all its finishing details. The work sends out a dedicated, a delicate wisp up into the sky, sending a message to all that the fire is still smouldering. Mm. A combination of all these factors means that we work through many structures and forms to build up this engineering work that creates a meeting place and an innovative connection or portal to the sky. You can all see there, there's a nice oh, little sorry. portal. Oh, that's okay. Um, the combination of all these factors means we, oh, sorry, many of these fires, many of the fires that along the headland were carefully allowed to, allowed to smoulder throughout the day and reignited at night as needed. The mastery of fire by mob in many forms for many uses is well documented and this artwork will really become alive at night when it illuminates internally and externally and creates a destination to watch the evening sky changing colours. Um, we've got a little video as well of the artwork. Um, now, like I said, this isn't the exact location but I think it's quite close. We're just going to you imagine where the wall is at the moment, it's pulled back a little bit from there. And that's what the local knowledge holders were keen to do, was just pull it back a little bit from that edge. And I think that's a really um, nice spot. It's pretty close in this video, but we will be slightly um, tweaking that to exactly where they'd like to place that. So you can see this, um, this image takes you right over the top and you can see the shadows in the background there. So that would be sometime in the morning when we've done this little video. And I'll show you some shadows a little bit later on that show you, show all throughout the day. But you can see the large meeting place and we also have that central stone there. So, yeah, like I said, the exact location is still to be, to be confirmed and we're also hoping to work with Bush Cabal on the future regeneration of the stages of the, of the headland. Um, and this is some of the native plants that they've selected to um, regenerate that area, which we're very excited about. Um, the council is currently planning on um, doing some more regenerative um planting further back behind there so that there is more park for the community to enjoy. So, um, so the finishes uh, of the artwork were developed to reflect the fire being made from native timbers. We've got it out of spotted gum at the moment and also the charcoal finish there that you can see, the burnt finish. Um, and we're working with community to tell the story of rock art around saltwater animals that may have been cooked in the fire around that place at the base of the work. But again, that is a conversation that still continues with community. Um, we've worked a lot with the shape and form and you can see from these images, it's a very unique and innovative form to tell this story. We have sketches, 3D models, on country experiences uh, that all add to our understanding of this and the development of the artwork. We're also very excited to see the shadows developing during the day and you can see in those images um, what it looks like, the beautiful patterns that it can create. Uh, we've developed a set of design drawings and the work and the footprint is approximately 10 metres in diameter. So Whoa. it's quite a similar footprint to the current structure that's out on the headland and it will rise approximately 8.3 oh, metres to the highest point. So we work closely with structural engineers and we've hidden an internal steel fabrication and we have a ring over the top there 
that uh, will also hold all of that structure in place. Um, the platform at the base will appear to be slightly floating as the beams just pierce through that base structure and are fastened to the bedrock below. And we're also hoping that Bush to Wall will do some planting underneath there for us. Uh, uh, and if you can make it tomorrow night, uh, we'd love to see you at the Harbour Diggers. It would be fabulous if you could come down and make sure you say hello. Um, we are going to plan another fire down on the headland in spring prior to the works commencing on site. And um, we'll let you know as we get close to that date. We'd love to have that elemental connection to this place again as we can create fire for our community or for your community on the headland. Yeah, so I would just like to end with the following note. Since time immemorial, Aboriginal people have been the continuing custodians of this country, now known as Australia. This land, its oceans and skies, and the Mianu or the knowing provided everything. All people hold this energy and have the ability to slow down, make space and remember this innate connection and interconnection to country. Thanks for listening. I know that's been a really 